Welcome back everyone. iOS 15 has been out for a little while now, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the hidden features. There's been a million of these videos, but let's go ahead and talk about some of my favorite things within iOS 15 that you can kind of call hidden in a way. Now these are beyond things like focus mode, enhanced FaceTime, things like that. Everyone knows what those things are, but let's go ahead and talk about the first thing. So something within iOS 15, which is very, very interesting, so within the Photos app, you can actually see for every single photo that you have, which specific app saved that specific photo. So if I go and click here, and if I go ahead and look into this specific app, if I go ahead and swipe up, you can see that it essentially tells me it's a screenshot. It'll try to give me a location, but I won't really find one. And it kind of looks a little bit better than iOS 14. iOS 14 looked a little bit strange in my opinion. It looked pretty you know, normal. This one, it looks a lot more in detail. It still shows you the time and different things like that. But if you swipe over and let's look at this specific photo I downloaded from the internet, if I swipe up, you can see that it'll tell me that it's saved from Safari. So I can go ahead and click here and essentially see all these other photos that also got saved in Safari as well. Now if I go and click cancel, you can also see all these other things, snow, art, whatever. If I go ahead and look into another photo, so let's just take this photo for example, which I also got from Safari. Again, if I swipe up, it'll tell me I downloaded from Safari. So if you download any photo from really any other app, things like, you know, even if you download a video from TikTok, for example, now I don't know if I downloaded any of these, so this is from TikTok. You can see that this one doesn't tell me it downloaded from TikTok. I don't really know what's going on with this one, but you know, case in point, whatever photo you downloaded from, most of the time it'll tell you where it's from. So that's a really awesome feature. I don't know what's going on here. Now I do want to showcase this other feature, which it kind of came with iOS 14, but it looks like it's been a little enhanced with iOS 15. So if you want, you can actually draw perfect screenshots, you know, draw perfect shapes within your photos on uh, you know, your iPhone. And this is something awesome, like I mentioned, I think it's more accurate with iOS 15. So if you click here and if you click edit, you can go into any photo. You wanna go ahead and click the edit button at the top right, and you can see we can now mark up our specific you know, photo. So for example, if I wanted to draw a circle, I would just draw a circle, there you go, that's that. But like I mentioned, I feel like iOS 15 got a little bit more accurate. So now if you wanna draw a perfect shape, all you have to do is draw the shape and then stop at the end of it and the photo will automatically draw the shape for you or the iPhone will. So if I wanna draw a square, I draw the square and I stop and it'll go ahead and draw that shape inside. Now within iOS 14, it was kind of weird. So if I went ahead and draw a shape, like a shape like this, sometimes it would draw a straight line or something like that, especially the star. So if I draw a star, you can see it'll draw a star for me. For some reason, it would, autom it would just randomly draw a line. So now you can draw these perfect shapes and I feel like it's more accurate. So there was another example where it didn't work. So I draw the straight line, now it worked. If I draw like a triangle, for example, this one's pretty good. But for some reason, it seems like it's a lot more accurate with iOS 15, thank God, than it was before. So that's another pretty cool feature in my opinion. Now another really awesome thing that came with iOS 15 is drag and drop. Now this is something I don't really see a lot of people talking about for some reason. I think I, they're starting to not talk about them last week. But when it first came out, it was like the craziest feature in my opinion. So drag and drop essentially is if you go ahead and go into something like iMet or your Safari browser for example, and you can actually now drag and drop things from one app to the other. So let's say I wanted to drag and drop whatever this was, right? I can go ahead and hold it down just like normal. So hold it down, get it into this panel. You can see it'll automatically start moving around as I move it around here. I can swipe up and I can go ahead and make my way over to the notes app. I can go ahead and click here and here's a new note, for example, I can go ahead and drag it in here and it should work. I don't know why it didn't work there. So let me try it again. So let me go and drag it down and just a drag and drop thing is crazy in and of itself that we now have that. So let me swipe up, go back here and let me go ahead and drag it in here. And you can see it doesn't work for some reason for that specific app. There could be a problem with I'm not 100% too sure. But this also works for text as well. So let's say I wanted to drag and drop this specific text. I can hold it down. I can get into this thing. So let's see if the reverse search works. So let's see if I can go and paste it here. And you can see I just now posted that specific text right into this panel. So that's an awesome thing. I love drag and drop and I'm really happy it came with iOS 15. Now another cool little feature that came with iOS 15 is the new dial picker. So when things like, you know, date and time settings, if you have to change the time, if you, whatever the case is, you can now actually do that within iOS 15 without having to go ahead and utilize their standard thing that they used before. So for example, if we make our way over to settings, we scroll down into general, we go and click date and time, which is right here. If I go ahead and, you know, for example, you know, just click off uh, set automatically, and for some reason this one isn't working, so let's go and make our way over to our clock. Now let's go ahead and make our way over to plus, 
you will see that our new dial picker is back. So before we had to go ahead and do it a different way, but also at the same time, if you want to, you can tap on it and you can now change this by, you know, actually typing out whatever time you want to. So that's a lot cooler. I like this way a lot more than the previous version. And this is like the older way of doing it. But now we have that capability back, which is really cool. Now, another thing that came back within iOS 15 is the magnifying glass. So if we make our way over to here or whatever, if we wanted to before to move our cursor, we can move our cursor going through here. We can move our cursor by going this way as well. But now we actually have our magnifying glass situation back. So if you hold it down, you can see up top, we now get that little magnifying glass that essentially showcases to us what we're kind of highlighting over. So that's really awesome. I love this a lot. This works and this is system wide. So if I go here, for example, and I do the same thing, I can hold it down. You can see the magnifying glass is now back. So that's a really, really awesome thing. I love seeing that and it's those little touches that makes iOS 15 feel like a bigger update than it was before. Now, another cool little feature within iOS 15 is that within Find My Network, so those of you who know, you can actually, you know, have, you know, trace your iPhone back, track your iPhone back, whatever, within iOS 15, 14, 13, all these other ones with Find My App. But now, this is really crazy, your iPhone can now be found even if it's powered off, if it's factory reset, if the battery dies, whatever the case is, you'll actually still be able to track your iPhone with this specific, you know, iOS version. So that's another really awesome feature that this specific version of software has. And like I mentioned, not every single version of you know software has this type of capability. Now we have that with iOS 15, which is awesome in and of itself. Now, finally, I want to showcase to you guys how you can download and install a Game Boy Advance simulator with iOS 15. This isn't really a secret. People already know this, but I wanted to showcase to you guys because I haven't been able to do really any emulator type videos. I don't want to get this channel taken down, but let's go ahead and show you how to do this. So first thing you want to do is make your way over to your Safari browser and you want to type in this specific link. Now, I can't tell you over the whatever. You essentially want to type in Eclipse Emu just like this. So you want to go and search for it and you'll see the first link. You want to go ahead and click on it just like this. Now, once you get here, you'll pretty much see this specific panel. You can go and click get. And once you click get, you can go and click play online. Now, an ad will come up. You just want to go and exit out of this specific ad. So it should just take one second. And for some reason, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So there you go. Once you skip through, what you want to do at this point is you want to go ahead and click on the three dots right there. You want to go and click share right there. You want to scroll down and then you want to click add to home screen, which is right there. Now, once you get into this little page, you want to click add and you will see on your home screen, you will now see your little eclipse icon right here. What you want to do is you want to open it and you will see that it'll be looking like just a standard, you know, emulator. It doesn't even look like it's supposed to be, you know, anything else or like not like an app. So you can go and click a load setup. You can click skip back or whatever you want to do. That's what I usually do. I scroll down, click close setup, and you will see you now have an empty emulator. So all you have to do now is go ahead and load your games within this emulator. So you can go and click plus. You can, you know, download the games straight on your phone, however you want to do it. In this specific case, I already have them on my device. So I'm going to go ahead and click upload and I'll go and choose file. And hopefully, okay, so I do have this one. No, not that one. I have this one. So let's go and see. So let's, and as you can see, it brought that specific game in and it's fully working as far as I can tell, it's probably well. And that's exactly how you do it. A very basic, very, very easy process. It doesn't take too much time and you can see it's fully working. So that's essentially it. And you can see I am on iOS 15. So those are just a few of my favorite hidden features within iOS 15. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.